How close are we to making a real lightsaber? And I don't mean one that just looks like a lightsaber. I mean one that can do this. So how far away are we? Months? Decades? Centuries? Let's find out. First of all, we need to identify what a lightsaber is, as well as all the things it has to be able to do to be considered a lightsaber. So to see exactly what constitutes a lightsaber, let's take a look at the Star Wars films. Okay, first of all, the lightsabers need to be able to cut through metal and people's arms. What else? Probably the characteristics of a lightsaber that make it the most dramatic and exciting to watch are one, the glowing beam, but two, the sounds that it makes as you swing it back and forth. Those are some of the most iconic aspects of a lightsaber. Okay, so they have to be in the shape of a blade of some sort, have the iconic lightsaber color, and make the classic lightsaber sound effects we all know and love. Anything else? The lightsabers are powered by a diadium power cell. The beam of a lightsaber is contained by the force powers of the user being channeled through the kyber crystals. So they have to be handheld or portable and have a very strong power source like a kyber crystal. But most importantly, they have to be able to do this. Okay, so in total, there are six key functions our lightsaber has to be able to do. Now, let's take a look at current lightsabers and whether they're able to meet any of these six key functions. First of all, we have the plastic toy lightsabers, which can range from cheap $5 versions to some reaching well over $1,000 that have some crazy realistic lighting and sound effects. While a lot of these model lightsabers can actually be used for dueling, most of them can't extend or retract like a real lightsaber would. But that isn't the case for Disney's new hyper-realistic retractable lightsaber featured on the Galactic Star Cruiser experience at Walt Disney World. To be able to witness this lightsaber firsthand, you'll have to shell out a few thousand dollars though. This immersive, yet expensive, experience will get you up close to the lightsaber, but you won't be able to use it yourself. And still, this lightsaber can't duel or cut through metal. So let's take a look at some more hardcore lightsabers, ones that can cut. First off, we have Alex Birkin of Alex Lab. He's built a handheld lightsaber that uses an electrolyzer and burner to make a plasma torch that can reach temperatures of 2800 degrees Celsius or over 5000 degrees Fahrenheit. This lightsaber can cut through steel and it looks pretty much like a lightsaber from the films in its design. The drawbacks of this one are that its blade looks more like flames than an actual lightsaber blade and it sometimes explodes in the user's hand. Uh oh. Alex isn't the only person trying to build a lightsaber though. James Hobson and Hacksmith Industries have made five different iterations of their lightsaber design, starting out with just heating a long piece of metal until it became red hot and able to cut through just about anything. Now though, they've been working on a retractable plasma blade that looks very similar to a real lightsaber. The power source and fuel can all fit on your hip, and it's powerful enough to cut through metal. They even found a way to change the color of the blade by adding in different chemicals. Although Hacksmith's most recent iteration of their lightsaber is the closest we have to the real thing right now, there still are a few drawbacks. For starters, it's still a flame-based blade, so the length of the blade varies sometimes, and it can't really be swung like a true lightsaber. Also, while the flame sounds pretty cool, it doesn't make the classic lightsaber sound effects. So if we're still not quite there in making a real-life lightsaber, how could it be done? Well, what if we started with something in the name of the lightsaber? Light. Researchers at Harvard and MIT have found a way to make light act like a molecule. They were actually able to make three or four light photons act like an object that cannot be passed straight through. So if we were able to make millions of these light photons do this in a narrow area, we could actually create a unified beam of light that would work much like a lightsaber. But for now, they've only been able to turn light into molecules in a super cold vacuum, and doing so with millions of photons would be very difficult. So this option is likely not accessible for a very long time. Probably the closest thing we'd ever get to a real life lightsaber would be one with a super hot plasma blade held together by a strong electromagnetic field powered by a microscopic antimatter power source. Wait, what? A lightsaber is a beam of contained plasma. In the Star Wars universe, it is contained using the force. In actual physics labs, we contain plasmas using large electromagnetic fields, and nobody has been able to contain a plasma in a small beam like a lightsaber, but you know, maybe someday we'd be able to. So a lightsaber blade would be made of super hot plasma that can expand and retract within a given area. And this area would be surrounded by a strong electromagnetic field that holds the plasma together. 
This type of magnetic field would even allow for actual lightsaber duels or for deflecting blaster bolts, since the magnetic fields of each lightsaber or bolt would just bounce right off one another. Making an electromagnetic field such as this would require a lot of energy though, and I mean a lot. One solution to this could be antimatter. Antimatter is something that sounds like science fiction, but it's fact. And if you mix antimatter and matter together, you get a crazy amount of energy. Even a single gram of antimatter could produce the same amount of energy as an atomic bomb. So just a few micrograms of antimatter would work to replace the kyber crystal power source. There might actually be just a few micrograms of antimatter inside kyber crystals, which powers the lightsabers we see in the Star Wars films. There are two main drawbacks to this kind of lightsaber though. First of all, plasma is very hard to contain in an electromagnetic field because it's made up of charged particles. Charged particles moving around make their own magnetic field. And so you have the magnetic field of the containment, but then you have the magnetic field the plasma makes and the two of them interact. And it's very hard to keep a stable field with that very, very complicated process. Right now, if we tried to create a plasma lightsaber, it would look nothing like what we'd imagine. And it would in fact be so large that we would be unable to hold it. So for now, our lightsaber would be the size of a football stadium rather than a handheld weapon. The second issue is that making the antimatter power source would be very expensive. And we've only been able to create one nanogram of antimatter in the Large Hadron Collider. Estimates put the cost of producing one gram of antimatter at over $25 billion. So getting the lightsaber of your dreams probably isn't in the budget. So how close are we really to making a lightsaber? For fully functioning lightsabers exactly the way that we see them in the Star Wars films, at least a hundred years away. And it would require a lot of time and money invested into making lightsabers a reality. For lightsabers that look pretty close to the real thing and don't require a big bulky pack on your hip, probably within the next few years. And for lightsabers that can cut through metal and make you feel like a Jedi, well, we're already there. Oh, oh come on now. This is like the coolest thing ever. Also check out the video on your screen for some more of my content. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching Rocket Riley.